Hello and welcome to a video which is designed to provide some clarity and uh, information about what is commonly misunderstood um, based on the feedback we get from our clients when we carry out inspections and that's about the um, stipulations in place for ceiling heights in residential properties. Um, so basically uh, we'll start off with the legal requirements that uh, are in place and within the National Construction Code Part 3.8.2, which is all about safe access and movement, um, ventilation and things. There's an area for ceiling heights, and it states that um, there are three different areas within a residential property that uh, have different levels of ceiling heights uh, minimums that are required when constructing properties. Why they're all different, not overly sure. Um, or the last one is the staircase. But the first thing um, that is a minimum requirement is for any habitable room. Habitable rooms, things like bedrooms, lounges, uh, living rooms, where you do most of your um, daytime activity and spend more time in the property, they need to be from the floor to the ceiling height, a minimum of 2.4 meters under the terms of the National Construction Code, which is the Bible for construction in um, Australia. The next area is what we call non-habitable areas or rooms, and that can be things like en-suites, wet areas, bathrooms, hallways, studies, uh, kitchens, and that has a minimum of 2.1 from the floor to the ceiling height, so 300 millimeters difference. The last measurement is where you have staircases, and that is you have to have a minimum of two meters from the bottom stairs to the next level up, so you have to have a clearance of two meters to comply with the minimum requirements when it comes to staircase construction for two level properties. Um, there are exceptions to this rule, and it seems that whenever we get questioned on site during our inspections, our clients are not familiar or aware of these exceptions. There's a steadfast belief um, generally when we're asked about this issue that if a room does not comply with the minimum requirements listed in the National Construction Code, that it is therefore illegal, non-compliant, and um, not acceptable, which is completely uh, not the case. Um, and when we explain that to people, they seem to be quite shocked. But um, there is an exception for a building certifier, who's the um, person who's responsible for signing off on um, building construction within Queensland, to accept areas where minimum heights are not achieved. So let's say, for instance, if there was a bedroom or lounge or some areas that were 2.39 metres or 2.35 metres or something like that but definitely not the 2.4 metres or 2.05 for a non-habitable room and not the 2.1. Unlike what um, the National Construction Code seems to suggest, which is there is a minimum and that is not achieved, it's not acceptable, um, the certifier under part 2.4.2 of the National Construction Code, which is about um, performance requirements, can initiate a um, his discretionary uh, abilities and sign off on the area that is not the minimum ceiling height, um, as long as, and this is the key definition, that um, the height of the um, area in question to be certified, which is not the minimum, um, as long as the certifier feels that the reduction in the height, um, does not, that does not overly or unduly affect the um, serviceability of the room or impact its ability to be used as its intended function. So it's a bit ambiguous. Um, and basically, um, it can be, we've seen some rooms, <laughs> bedrooms uh, that was 2.2 at one end and 2.1 in another end, which was an enclosed veranda, which was a bit of a naughty, naughty, it shouldn't be allowed to be the case. But because that there is that ability for a certifier to um, manipulate that and say it doesn't impede the overall functionality of the room, it can be certified. Um, sounds crazy, but in that particular instance, uh, it just highlights how um, there can be manipulation and a um, corruption of the, the law because the certification was actually done by a friend of the vendors. Um, it should never have been done as a bedroom, but um, it was an old enclosed veranda, and um, that's why it was ticked off because there's an ability to um, manipulate it depending on um, if, it's, um, if it's ethical or not, and in that case it certainly wasn't. So the golden rule is um, never ever come to a conclusion that if a ceiling lining area is not the minimum stated in the National Construction Code, 2.4 for habitable, 2.1 for non-habitable, and two meters for um, staircase, that it is not going to be okay and signed off on the official council records by the building certifier because they indeed have an ability to do that and we see it time and time again where they actually do do that and sign off on it where it is below the minimum. The only way you're going to determine exactly whether or not um, there is um, there are any ceiling linings in place at a property that are a little bit lower uh, and whether or not they've still been signed off is by doing a formal search with the 
relevant council of authority where the property is located in and that will determine whether or not the area in question has been signed off because it'll be on the council's record so an example is if you have a an original three bed uh high set home that's had an underhouse extension done um, and it's got two bedrooms downstairs that have been added retrospectively so originally on council records it was a three bed one bath and they've changed and added some things down the bottom which is commonly done and invariably it's done not to comply to the requirements it's um, done in a bit of an ad hoc manner without building approvals um, but it's being sold on the internet as a five bedroom uh, three bathroom now because of the changes I've made. Well, if you do a search on the internet just to verify, uh, sorry, with the council just to check to see whether or not the marketing of the property is a five bed three bathroom is indeed correct, the council records will tell you pretty quickly if there has been any certification or approvals for the lower level rooms that are not the legal height and therefore will answer your question. No one else can do that for you. Don't listen to any marketing agent or vendor or any other story about what might be okay or not okay. It is purely and simply a search with the relevant council authority that will determine whether or not any under minimum requirement ceiling linings have indeed been signed off as okay, um, as per the ability for the certifier to do that um, under that legislation. So just um, to, to summarize it quickly, only that search can do that and only rely on that when you're making a decision about whether or not a house you're looking at purchasing has got um, formality or have been certified whether there are lower ceilings in place. Um, there's a common misrepresentation done by agents at the time to say things are legal or they're of legal height and they may well be um, at a property um, say for an underhouse area but that doesn't mean they're on council records as being certified and formal only the search can tell you that so if you ever hear look this these rooms are okay they're bedrooms by an agent or a, a seller because they're 2.4 it doesn't mean anything at all it just means that yeah sure they're past the minimum requirement as defined in the national construction code but unless a building application and approval and certification has been done for that area, they won't be on the council record. So never ever fall into that trap and always do searches with the council. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, all the information that I can give you on that area and hopefully it clears it up if there was any ambiguity or misunderstanding about it. Um, it certainly is when we do our jobs and, and speak to our clients um, at inspections that we carry out. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've, you found this information beneficial, informative, and uh, we'd love to help you at some stage in the future if you do end up buying a property. And uh, thank you for watching.